All right, today we're going to talk about uh, the concept of linear independence. So if we have a set of vectors, um, let's say p vectors in Rn, the set is said to be linearly independent if we take a linear combination, set it equal to the zero vector, and this equation has only the trivial solution. So the only way uh, we can take a linear combination of the vectors and get the zero vector is if all the coefficients are equal to zero. Um, since this, this uh, equation here is equivalent to the system defined by this augmented matrix, uh -huh. then we also say that the set is linearly independent if the system corresponding to the augmented matrix where we put all the vectors in as the columns, augment on the zero vector, um, if that uh, has only the trivial solution. So these are equivalent. Now, if this has only the trivial solution, then that means it has a unique solution, right? It has only the trivial solution. So um, all the c's equal to zero is the only solution, so it's unique. So that means it has no free variables. So uh, kind of the uh, typical method of determining if a system or if a uh, set of vectors is linearly independent is to stick them in the columns of a matrix, as I've done here, uh, tack on the zero vector for the augmented column, and see if that uh, matrix has, is if there are any free variables in that system. If uh, there are no free variables, then you know the, the uh, vectors are linearly independent. If you do find a free variable, then you know that there are an infinite number of solutions to that system, and therefore the vectors are not linearly independent. In that case, we say they're linearly dependent. So here's a couple of vectors, and uh, if we want to find out if they're linearly independent, then as I showed you before, take a linear combination of them and set it equal to zero, as I've done here. We put that into an augmented matrix. It looks like this with just the two vectors stuck in the columns and the zero vector tacked on as the augmented column. And we can do one row operation and uh, zero out uh, in this position. And notice that we have no free variables, and therefore that means that uh, we have only the trivial solution. And you can see that the solution is unique. And so these vectors are linearly independent. Uh, here's another set of vectors. Right? Uh, just change just a little bit. Let's see if they're linearly independent. So again, we take a linear combination, set it equal to zero. Stick that in uh, as an augmented matrix. Do one row operation, and we end up with this matrix here. And notice that um, we've got a free variable. x2 here, the second column, uh, has no pivot position. So x2 is a free variable. So therefore, these vectors are linearly dependent. Now, if you look at the vectors that we had, um, the first set, if we graphed them, looks like this. Uh, we had 2, 1, and 1, 4, so they look like that. They're linearly independent. Whereas that second set, um, I believe we had 1, 4, and 2, 8. Let's back up. Yep, 1, 4, and 2, 8. And so they're multiples of each other, so they're uh, indicated in this picture, and they're linearly dependent. Interestingly, you can see that these two vectors uh, um, do uh, if you if you think about the span of these two vectors, then you can take a linear combination of these two and produce any vector in R two. However, for these two, any linear combination of these two vectors only gets you vectors on the line that's defined by these vectors. I'm going back uh, in the negative direction here, but you get no vectors off that line. Uh, we're, we've been looking at the two-vector case, which is uh, at times can be misleading, but let's examine what we can say about it. Um, when you have just two vectors, then they are linearly dependent if uh, at least one is a multiple of the other. All right. 
So if they're multiples of each other, or one's a multiple of the other, then uh, they are linearly dependent. They're linearly independent if neither's a multiple of the other. So that works when you only have two vectors. Okay, so let's let's kind of expand our uh, scope here and um, look at a set with three vectors. So um, I took the set we were looking at initially, one, four, and two, one, and threw in another vector in there. Now, what do you think? Are these vectors linearly independent? Well, if we take a linear combination of them, set it equal to zero vector, right? This is just going back to the first definition we talked about. And throw that in an augmented matrix, you end up with this, and what happens? Hmm, no need to do any row operations. Why is that? Well, let's think. How do we know if the system is, uh, or if the uh, system, we want to know does the system have uh, only the trivial solution or not? Or another way is does it have any free variables? Well, we can look at this one and say, yep there's at least one free variable. There has to be because we have three variables and only two equations. So three columns, only two rows. So we have to have at least one free variable because we can have at most two pivot positions. Right? So these vectors are linearly dependent. Okay, so here's a rule. If the set contains more vectors than there are entries in each vector, then the set's linearly dependent. And that's the case we just looked at. We had three vectors in R2. So more entries and more vectors than there are entries in each vector. Okay, there it is. Got uh, three vectors and uh, only two entries in each vector. Um, if we look at that augmented matrix and um, do some row operations on it, uh, we end up at this point. Now remember, back here, just looking at this, you knew they were linearly dependent because you had more vectors than there were entries in each vector. But if we do these row operations and get this matrix in reduced echelon form, then we end up here. So if we wrote the solution um, of that system, uh, it looks like this, you know, from the second row you get x2 is going to equal 2x3, x1 is equal to negative x3, x3 is a free variable. Okay, so you can plug in uh, anything you want for x3 to generate specific solutions. For instance, if we said x3 equals 0, that's going to give us the trivial solution, right, because x3 is 0, and based on uh, what x1 and x2 are, defined in terms of x3, they're going to be 0 also. If we set x3 equal to 1, then we get x1 is negative 1, x2 is 2, and x3 is 1. Now, why do we, where, did, where does that apply to? Well, notice we're, we were trying to find a solution to this equation. Right? We were trying to see, can we find non-zero values for x1, x2, and x3, or at least one of them non-zero, um, so that we can produce the zero vector. And so um, this uh, general form of the solution tells us how to form uh, the values for x1, x2, and x3. So we can take our uh, values that we got for x3 equals 1, plug them in, so notice if we do that, we end up with negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, plus 4 here is negative 3, uh, I mean positive 3, minus 3 gives us 0. And in the second position, we get negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. So we can find specific values uh, for these coefficients so that we can produce the 0 vector. Now notice from this, we could take that equation and solve it uh, for negative 3, 2. So we can just take this over to the, um, the other side and notice that negative 3, 2 can be written as a linear combination of 1, 4, and 2, 1. Right? That's what we've just done here. We've written negative 3, 2 as a linear combination of the other two vectors. Another way of saying that is that negative 3, 2 is in the span of these other two vectors. All right? 
It's a linear combination of them, so that means it's in the span of those two vectors. And if you think back to our picture, that makes sense, right? Here were uh, the first two vectors, 2, 1, and 1, 4. And remember before, I talked about how these span R2, right? We can take a linear combination. We can scale each of them and then add those scaled vectors together to produce any vector in R2. And uh, how do we know that? Well, just look at those two vectors. Do a row operation, and look, we have a pivot position in every row. So by theorem 4, going back to section 1.4, theorem 4, that says that uh, the vectors span R2. Right? One of the things in theorem 4 is if you have a pivot position in every row, that means the columns of the original matrix span uh, the uh, space in which they live, which in this case we're in R2. Okay, so here's another rule that uh, relates to linear dependence. A set of two or more vectors is linearly dependent if and only if at least one of the vectors is a linear combination of the others. So back here we saw that negative uh, 3, 2 is a linear combination of the other two vectors. And in fact we could have solved this system for any of these three vectors. We could solve for any of these three vectors in terms of the other two. So any of these vectors is a linear combination of the other two. Okay, there you see it um, again. All right, moving on. Um, if Here's another rule, keep in mind. If a set contains the zero vector, then that set is linearly dependent. So if you have a zero vector in the set, then the set has to be linearly dependent. Here's an example of that. You got the zero vector. Notice that it's always going to be a free variable. Okay, the variable corresponding to the zero vector is always going to be free, and hence uh, the set would be linearly dependent. So, summary. Uh, set of vectors is linearly independent. If you take a linear combination, set it equal to zero, and you have only the trivial solution. So. So all the x is equal to 0 is the only solution. Equivalently, you throw all those, ma those vectors into uh, a matrix, tack on the 0 vector for the augmented column, solve that system, and you get only the trivial solution. Okay. On the other hand, it's linearly dependent if the system has at least one free variable, because in that case you would have an infinite number of solutions. And uh, another way of characterizing linear dependence is a set's linearly dependent if at least one of the vectors is a linear combination of the others. Okay, and that's it for uh, section 1.7.